Welcome, fellow freaks, geeks, and nostalgic peeps to my channel, Slime and Slashers, where, yeah, we talk about everything from Nickelodeon Slime to horror movie slashers, but plenty of stuff in between, including books. In today's video, yeah, we'll be talking about books. We will be specifically hauling some books by an author I think you guys should be checking out, a very underrated author. So stay right where you are, we'll go to the short intro, when we come back, I will haul the books, and I will tell you about this very awesome, freaking badass, underrated author. Welcome back, guys! Okay, dun 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 dun! The author I want to highlight and spotlight today is Mark Morris! Dun 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 dun! I think Mark Morris is fantastic. I think he is criminally underrated. I said that weird, but criminally underrated. <laughs> That's how you say it correctly. Alright, so I first read Mark Morris last year when I did a buddy read of Toadie with my friend Alex. This is a wonderful coming-of-age story, but what it has over other coming-of-age stories is it has wonderful horror imagery. Some of the best horror imagery I've ever read. I have lots of tabs in here because there's lots of great passages that I ended up marking. In fact, I think I didn't even have tabs for the first couple hundred pages, so I bought tabs. So that's why, like, you see the tabs kind of start midway and then <laughs> through the rest of the book. I really had a good time with this read. It really surprised me how much I loved it. And it surprised me that nobody but me and Alex ever talked about Mark Morris. I haven't heard any other booktuber ever, anybody on Instagram or Bookstagram, let's say, talk about Mark Morris. So I was like, what the hell? So after reading Toady, both Alex and I really enjoyed it and we decided, hey, we want to read more by Mark Morris. So we picked up another book and Buddy read it this year, which I'll talk about in a second. But I wanted to show you guys, I do have the American version of Toady. It is about 200 pages less, you could see. It is less chunky. And yeah, I would advise checking out the full edition because you'd be missing out on some things if you found the Horror Club, which again is the American version of Toady. Toady is the UK version. So we read Toady Horror Club. I didn't even know I owned Horror Club, but I was looking through my shelf and I was like, oh my god, I have Horror Club. <laughs> what the hell? I have the American version of Toady. So I feel bad because Alex sent me this, but it's good she did because I didn't have the full edition. So we wouldn't have been reading the same thing, essentially, because a lot is cut out in this version. The next Mark Morris book that Alex and I decided to buddy read together was Stitch, and we just read this very recently, back in January, just last month of 2023, and we were both blown away by this. This was so fantastic. Again, we had more wonderful, in-depth, really creative horror imagery that I have not read from any other author. I just think Mark Morris has a wonderful way with words. I think this is a little bit darker than Toady is in some ways, but the ending felt a little more hopeful than Toady, if that makes sense. So Toady had a very bleak ending, in my opinion, but I liked that. So we both gave this five stars, and I think Alex even liked it better than Toady. I liked it I think the same, but I like them both for different reasons, and I like different aspects of both books, if that makes sense. This, we're following a group of people at university, and there's this guy named Stitch who ends up running into somebody from university, and Stitch ends up changing the person he comes in contact with from university. His name is Dan. Dan becomes charismatic, he becomes almost magical, and he starts this group, which really, it's more like a cult, called The Crack, and he starts this up at school. And so some people join and they are changed. They are not themselves. And other students start to notice this. And then there's an investigation by the students, like what the hell is going on? But there's lots more going on than just that. This book, there's lots of characters, but I never felt overwhelmed. I thought it was just so weird, but in the best way. And so after reading this and Toadie, I was like, okay, I need everything that Mark Morris has ever written. So I went on eBay and I went on Amazon and I bought a whole bunch of things 
basically everything I could find. Now, if you look on Amazon, you see a lot of used stuff by Mark Morris that you could find. Not too much, you know, buy as new type of things. And maybe that's just because we're in the United States and he's a UK author, but I had to buy all of these old books, which I think are out of print here. So I had to buy them off of eBay and Amazon. But I did buy one newer book that was published in recent years. So let's go on and I will show you guys what I hauled. Here we have Mr. Bad Face. I really, really like the cover. It's creepy with this off-putting eye. I hate eyes. <laughs> eyes bother me. This was published in 1996 originally. And the back says... It started as a harmless practical joke, but then the real nightmares began. John Stryker is the neighborhood boogeyman. Hideously disfigured, he hides himself away from the rest of the world, until the night when a group of children set fire to his house and reduce it, and its owner, to ashes. Mr. Badface has been well and truly laid to rest, or so the children think. They're grown up now, and they've struggled hard to leave the bad dreams behind. Then, without warning, a figure from the past casts his shadow across the present. Mr. Badface is back, and he wants revenge. A darkly imaginative and deeply disturbing read from the author of Secret of Anatomy. This sounds fantastic. I am so pumped to get to this. So yes, I want to do this whole haul as a way to highlight Mark Morris, give you the synopses of his books that you may not have heard of. I know some people have heard me talk about Stitch, some people have heard me talk about Toady, but I wanted to highlight Mark Morris as a whole and maybe bring some light to his awesome work and shed some light overall on his awesome books and him. So yeah, hopefully you guys will be intrigued and will want to go and search for his work. Here we have The Secret of Anatomy, which was just referenced on the back of the other book. So this was published first. This was published in 1995. And by the way, Clive Barker blurbed the back and said, Mark Morris is one of the finest horror writers at work today, and The Secret of Anatomy is his most disturbing work to date. Finely crafted and powerfully written, it is an apocalyptic journey into dark and forbidden territory. Pretty awesome. And let's take a peek at what the back of the book has to say. David Fox, fast approaching his 40th birthday, is in the throes of a midlife crisis. That is until he finds a message in a bottle whilst walking on the beach. The message, written in 1953, is from a boy called John Marshall, who claims his father is trying to kill him. And with a new, invigorating purpose to his life, David is compelled to find out what happened all those years ago. The truth is more bizarre and horrific than he could ever have imagined. At the heart of this in investigation is a secret society called the Flux, and each of its members possesses unique and formidable supernatural powers, and they want the bottle. Here we have a short little story slash novella. This is called The Dogs, and yeah, we can see this terrifying flipping dog face on the front. It starts with a little story from Mark Morris, a note I should say, about how he came up with the story when they were visiting a friend. And it's very short. There are illustrations, it looks like. And this was first published in 2001. So excited to check out this short little book. And the back says... Alice arrives to live in her aunt's house as a frightened young orphan. She leaves years later alone and far more frightened. When things you love disappear, it's unbearable. But when they come back, it can be terrifying. Next up, we have The Ugly Men by Mark Morris with an introduction from Stephen Laws. And by the way, I didn't realize this would be signed, but it is signed by both Mark Morris. You can't really see it very well. There we go. By both Mark Morris and Stephen Laws. Pretty darn cool. And it's a signed and numbered edition. So this is like a special edition. All of these books I bought, by the way, they were all reasonably priced. So it sucks that we can't buy new to contribute to Mark Morris more, but maybe there is a different place I could have gotten his books. Like, maybe I should have looked at this publishing company, which I think he publishes with a lot, to, to buy new, but I just didn't know if there was a lot of options, and I didn't know where to look. All right, so the inside flap tells us a little bit about the premise, so here we go. Rob Loomis has everything he could wish for, a beautiful girlfriend, a job he loves, a nice flat in London, life is sweet, until the day that his mother rings him at work to tell him his quiet, thoughtful, and apparently contented father has hung himself from the banister of their family home. Before long, Rob finds that it's not only his own and his mother's grief that he has to cope with, 
a mysterious hissing voice on the phone informs him that his father was murdered, and that his murderers, the Ugly Men, are targeting Rob as their next victim. But if Rob's father is really dead, why does Rob glimpse him standing between distant trees, watching his own funeral? Is his father a phantom, a figment of Rob's imagination, or has he somehow faked his own death? in order to avoid some terrible retribution. To discover the truth, Rob must confront and accept shocking revelations about his father, must delve deep into his father's past, and in particular into certain events that occurred in California in 1969 during the fabled summer of love. So this sounds so interesting and fascinating. Seems like the Ugly Man is a cult, but we will have to read it to actually see. And I'm just super excited to read this. Very short. And it was published in 2002. Here we have his book, Long Barrow. And this one seems really fun and intriguing and almost like it has a fantasy element to it. This has a very similar cover in terms of there's like an eye looking thing on the cover. Kind of like Mr. Badface. So let's take a look at when this was published real quick. This was published in 1997, so an earlier work of his. And let's read the synopsis. When David Wisher's mother inherits a house in the peaceful Yorkshire village of Longbarrow, David feels he is coming home, for he has seen the house in his dreams. And when he eventually arrives in Longbarrow, he finds a place touched by the stories and beliefs of the past. There's old Jonas Dyer, whose mystical visions have driven him to the verge of madness. Mr. Toot, who uses magic to cure all ills. The little men, too small to be human, who are said to come out of the river. And Black Shuck, a ghostly dog with glowing eyes, whose appearance heralds approaching death. Most extraordinary of all, there is the legend of the Seven Sleepers, defeated in an ancient battle and trapped throughout the centuries. Their evil powers dormant. Here's a look at the spine. This is the publishing company that I see releases a lot of his work. Here we have two short story collections, a brand new one and a older one. So the older one, there's some stories in here that are actually included in here, but that's okay with me. I wanted both because I don't think all the stories from, this one's called Close to the Bone, is in Warts and All. But either way, look at the great covers with the hands. This one has spiders on the hand. This one has like creepy cuts and like a house with like blood running out and that's what's highlighting the cuts here wonderful stuff it's hard to get with the glare but yeah look at how fabulous that is look at how great the spine looks this whole edition looks very very nice and yes the hardcover has the same thing as the dust jacket has but it's very lovely i love it so yeah, I bought this one new, and this is the most recent book that I bought of his from 2020. And again, it's a collection of short stories. I'm very happy to check this out. My friends actually just read a short story by Mark Morris for my friend Amy's book club. She was reading this collection. I think it was called Isolation. I will double check about that. But a lot of people's favorite stories, or one of their favorite stories, was the story by Mark Morris. I don't know what that story was called, but apparently he's very good at writing short stories, which I can believe. Even though the two books I've read by him are quite chunky, it would be interesting to see him tackle a shorter story to see how everything ties up together in a, you know, quicker way. So that'll be very fun to dip into, and I just had to have this older collection too. Again, checking out the contents of both books, it doesn't look like every single story is in the newer book, or the newer collection, but either way, even if all the stories were in, I still wanted to have this, because look at the freaking cover. Amazing. I love it. So, Close to the Bone, the older short story collection, was published in 1994. So, freaking awesome. All right, just two more books. Here we have The Immaculate, and I really like how this edition is very much like the other book, the short story collection edition I showed you. Awesome freaking author photo, by the way. So punk rock looking. I love it. <laughs> it's fantastic. All right, so this was published in 1992, so very old, you know, relatively <laughs> compared to now. So it says here, 
Jack Stone, outwardly shy and unremarkable, writes works of dark and tortured fantasy which have captured the public imagination. Despite his celebrity status, he is a lonely man whose smart London life is a form of exile. He has painful memories he does not wish to examine, roots he refuses to revisit, until he meets Gail, a beautiful, emphatic girl who seems to sense the shadows that surround him. When news arrives of a death in his family, Jack is forced to return to the horror that has colored his nightmares for years, his childhood home. There he finds the terror and humiliation he remembers from his upbringing, but he discovers something else as well, a revelation more startling than he could have dreamed of in his wildest flights of fantasy. The Immaculate is an impressive and compelling major novel from one of Britain's most talented new horror writers. So this one seems very intriguing, of course, and I'm super excited to check it out. And here is the last book I have to highlight that I bought, Genesis, and freaking awesome cover, very sci-fi feeling. Let's see what the back of the book says right after we check when it was published. This one was published in 1999 originally, and let's see what this says. It's breaking through. In a nightclub restroom, a man mumbles these words and then puts a shotgun in his mouth and pulls the trigger. The only witness, music journalist Nick, watches in horror as he crumples to the ground beside the similarly slain bodies of a woman and a little girl. Nick exits the room fast, but when someone goes in to check out his story, the bodies are no longer there. The things get really strange after that. Unspeakable nightmares, hallucinations, mysterious figures shadowing him. Is Nick losing his mind? Or is someone or something planting ideas in his head? And why does that word Genesis keep cropping up? Nick battles to keep a grip on his sanity, but Nick's wildest nightmares, his deepest fears, couldn't begin to prepare him for the horror from the past which is about to engulf him. By the way, this other photo is more journalistic, like, hey, yeah, I'm chill now. I'm not a punk anymore. <laughs> but I like the punk photo. <laughs> like, the awesome punk photo. But this photo is nice, too. All right, so that's it for my haul. I really just wanted to highlight Mark Morris because I think Toadie and Stitch were fantastic. I think his writing style is unique. And like I said in the beginning, I do think he's very underrated, at least from what I've read from him. I've really enjoyed both books. I can't wait to dive into more of his work. And I was hoping to introduce him to some of you who may have never heard of him before because I just think he's someone whose work should be talked about and should be discovered and should be shouted from the rooftops that he's freaking awesome because it's kind of cool when you find someone who you think is an underrated author a gem of a writer because i think his work is really really fantastic at least from what i've read so far again i've got a long way to go but i've heard from other people who are well versed in his work that his work is fantastic as a whole and his entire body of work is worth checking out so i am so pumped and jazzed to take a deep dive into the fictional worlds of Mark Morris. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the haul. Are you going to pick up any work by Mark Morris? I'd really like to hear about it if you are. Do any of these books specifically sound intriguing or enticing to you? Which ones, you know, sound the most compelling? Leave that in the comments below. For this time, guys, that is it for me. I want to thank you guys for spending the time with me. I haven't done a haul in a while, but this one was a very special haul and it had a very important reason behind it to uh, highlight this author that I wanted to talk about that I feel like a lot of people aren't talking about, but they should be. All right, guys, till next time, you know what you can do. Keep on killing it. Bye, guys.